It is my absolute delight and pleasure to introduce to you a gentleman who has been a friend of the Greenwood County Democrats, a great friend of Democrats throughout all of the state, who is not shy to voice his opinion, even if it may break the party line, and I really respected that. He is a representative of the youthful vote or the youthful voice in our communities. He is an activist. He does more than just talk. He walks the walk. Uh, returning for a second stint as a speaker, Mr. Jalen Elrod from Greenville. Please give him a welcome. If you may remember, he joined us for our July breakfast meeting uh, over a year ago when we held it outdoors at Robert and Ken Headley Downs' house. Uh, he knocked it out of the park then. Welcome, sir. The mic is yours. Thank you so much. What's up, Greenwood Democrats? Y'all still fired up? Y'all yeah. still ready to go? Ready to go. Now I wanted to make my way back to Greenwood before it's all said and done because I wanted to tell you all that we have to elect Joe Cunningham and Ms. Casey, Governor, Lieutenant Governor of the state of South Carolina. When we see what the Republicans have been doing this year, the draconian measures they have done, implemented, to restrict a woman's right to choose, embolden by a radical and out of touch Supreme Court. When we see that they have done nothing to pay our teachers more, to invest in our students, when we see that they have invested nothing to fix our roads and our bridges, when we see that they consistently put politics above the people of South Carolina, we know we need a change. Yeah. Yeah. And not just there, I was hard and I apologize for getting here a little late, I was coming back from Columbia, but it made me feel good when I drove down the street and I saw signs for Bill Kimmler, who's gonna get elected to the State House next month. The work you do here in Greenwood, it is important. It matters. Because the stakes are too high for us to have a continuation of the status quo. Henry McMaster, he has to go. Pamela Everett, he has to go. The Republicans who think they can control our lives, the Republicans who act not without, princi without principle, the Republicans who care nothing more about making the rich richer, making the poor poorer, who put their power and their prestige above the needs of this community, the needs of communities like mine in Greenville and across this state. Democrats, it is not my being dramatic when I say we are the last best hope for the state of South Carolina. We have to continue doing the work. We have to continue fighting the fight. We have to continue knocking on doors and making phone calls and putting out yard signs and driving people to the polls and vote by vote, community by community, neighbor by neighborhood by neighborhood, district by district, county by county. We will live out the creed of our state. While we breathe, we hope, and we will bring about the day for our children and our children's children that is prophesied in scripture, where justice scrolls down, strolls down like water, and righteousness like a mighty stream. I appreciate you so much for having me, and I am available to answer any questions y'all would have. I know Bill has one at least, but I appreciate you so much, and God bless all of you. Thank you, Jalen. Is there somebody who wants to ask a first question of Mr. Elrod? All right, I do have a question. You have been traveling around the country this year. I have. Could you talk about some of your experiences, where you've been, what you've been doing? Yeah, um, I am currently working for a super PAC. That's an uh-oh for some people. Um, but we have been um, doing work in the state of Delaware, making sure that that state stays blue. As I'm sure some of you know, there's a competitive Senate race down up there in uh, Pennsylvania between John Frederman and um, Dr. Oz, oddly enough. So we did some work up there regarding their field. Most of my campaign experience has been field work, making vote universes, seeing who we need to get out, whether we need to hit them with mailers, text banks, phone banks, things like that. And then recently, we've been spending a lot of time in Georgia, uh, making sure Raphael Warnock gets elected. All right. Because his opponent has been having a little bit of problem. I don't know if you heard. <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, it's, it turns out the man of family values doesn't really have family values himself. That's right. And uh, we've been working damn hard, excuse my language, to make sure that Stacey Abrams is the next governor of the state of Georgia. So doing that all the while, you know, coming down here and sure, you know, 
doing what I can to, you know, hang around Joe Cunningham, Crystal Matthews, especially uh, Lisa Ellis, and making sure we have some, not just Democrats, but at least some competent people that are gonna be leading the state of South Carolina. So I've been busy over the past six to seven months. So, you know, hopefully it pays out. That's right. Any other questions? Somebody's got something. Uh, okay. How often do you uh, work out? Uh, every day, try to. Try to. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Somebody should tell my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, I have a question. Uh, we've been looking at the ads been going around. Now, there's not too many uh, Democratic ads flying on the, on the news yeah. or on the telly these days. And I haven't seen anything from Matthews. Why? Is she still running? I think she's great, but you got to tell people. Um, yeah, I think um, Crystal Matthews is great as well. I think um, the uh, ads that would be running, um, that's a question for her campaign. I know from the South Carolina Democratic Party's perspective, we are committed to electing all Democrats um, up and down the ballot. So because of that, we don't run ads for a specific candidate. So um, if you don't see um, ads from uh, Representative Matthews, I'm sure uh, her campaign would love to answer them. But I agree with you. She is great. And we definitely look forward to her beating Tim Scott because he needs to go too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am, right here. We got a question over here. Uh, she had one too, Bill. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. okay. I'll, I'll be brief. Uh, thanks. Uh, welcome to Greenwood, Mr. Elroy. Thank you. Um, my question is, I watched Joe Cunningham on his commercial when he was on the ball field with the football. Uh, he didn't, I don't think he said anything about expanding Medicaid in South Carolina. Uh, do you know if that's something that he would be working on? And I think he's right in line with the legalizing marijuana as the president made that announcement uh, lately as well. So I think that would be a great thing uh, for South Carolina moving forward. But question is, do you know if he's planning on uh, expanding or working on expanding Medicaid in South Carolina? Again, I don't want to speak for um, any of the campaigns, but I know um, based on um, Joe Cunningham's website and co personal conversations I've had with him, he is dedicated and has promised to expand Medicaid for 250,000 South Carolinians who need it on day one. And I think that's one of the reasons that we uh, need to elect him. Because there's no excuse for the Republicans not having done it other than, again, them putting politics before people. Great question. In your travels, uh, speaking with uh, young people. Yes, ma'am. If you notice, you don't see many <laughs> young people in. Getting them to uh, want to vote or to want to be a part. Now, I know most of the time though, those who are in, in the colleges or community colleges, they, a lot of them will go ahead and get involved, but just other uh, working young people to, to really know that this, that, that we, what we stand for really matters. How, how do you respond to that? Is that? It's hard. Um, sure. I think there is a lot of cynicism about our politics. Mm -hmm. I think that people are skeptical mm -hmm. of the ability to bring about change through mm -hmm. the political process. Mm -hmm. And I think it takes us going into these communities, specifically our high schools, our colleges. Mm -hmm. um, in Greenville, when I was head of the Young Democrats of the county, we um, went into the nightclubs, the barbershops, the beauty salons, the basketball games. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm allowed to tell this story, Bill. We even had a voter registration drive in one of the strip clubs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> registered 200 voters that night. But anyway. <laughs> but I think to answer your question is meeting young folks where they are and showing them they have a stake in this. Mm -hmm. I think that when we take the same measures that we took decades and decades ago, mm -hmm. you know, primarily through the churches, there's nothing wrong with that inherently. Mm -hmm. But I think that it takes a little bit more. Yes. So, you know, a lot of people my age, I just turned 30, um, a lot of my generation really aren't going to church mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. um, our parents did or like our grandparents did. Yep. And, you know, while, you know, us detaching from the church is a whole nother issue. We still need to go out to meet people where there are. Mm -hmm. So it is going to those nightclubs, the beauty salons, the barbershops, the restaurants, going out to the festivals, the concerts, the football games, and telling people 
this matters. Mm -hmm. If you don't vote, mm -hmm. if you're a young woman in the state of South Carolina, the mm -hmm. Republicans want to control your body and that is not hyperbole anymore. Mm -hmm. When we go out, we want to tell young people, young kids, hey, if you want your kids to have a quality education, you need to pay your teachers more for one. And two, you need to invest in your students. Mm -hmm. We want to tell young people who might be dealing with high crime rates like the um, mayor candidate mentioned earlier, hey, you can't tackle crime. You don't get guns off the street and the Republicans mm -hmm. with these crazy gun measures they want to implement. That's not going to fly. Mm -hmm. So when we show them as Democrats what we stand for mm -hmm. and who we are and that we want to build a brighter future. I think that's how we get more young people into the fold, and that's how we flip South Carolina blue, which I believe we'll do this decade. And, what, and also to remind them about local. Yes, the, they, the local stuff. Yes, they think you know, that that matter. You know what I'm saying? You know, whatever, whatever. But the local community and have and care about where you live. I mean, you know, and just just things like but clean up campaigns around your rental property. I mean, if you rent and clean that up. Mm -hmm. You know, are just regular things that you can do, and cause, because if you don't show that you care about exactly where you live, mm -hmm. then the the people and who who get up there, if they don't see that you're wanting to do that, then they're not gonna necessarily want to, you know, try to keep fighting that battle if you're not showing it. I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. A great question. Our next question. Now, before I let her ask the question, you started off your speech with fired up, ready to go. Do you know who originated that phrase? Uh, I believe, according to Barack Obama's biography, autobiography, it is uh, Councilwoman Edith Childs. And that's who you're about to speak to right okay, now. Okay, then. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. All right, take somebody with you. I, I have a, I have a question for you. Yes, ma'am. Now, how are we on uh, uh, passing the marijuana law? Because I support it, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Uh -huh. Our son had an accident back in 2000. Yes, ma'am. And he won't. He doesn't take any medication because the medication did not agree with him. It made him a zombie. Yes, ma'am. And he smokes pot. He smokes pot. But because of the laws in South Carolina, he has to be very careful mm -hmm. about him smoking pot. But it's a medication for him. Yes, ma'am. And I think those people that want to smoke, 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 smoke marijuana, that's their choice. Yes, ma'am. And I think if we can help pass that law in South Carolina, we need to do that. The president already started. Let those folk go. They got simple charges with simple marijuana. Let them go. So that's just a quick. Um, so by the end of the year, according to the New York Times, more than half the states in this nation will have legalized marijuana. South Carolina's on the back burner. Always. And I think one of the ways we get in front of this is to elect Joe Cunningham as governor elect good crate candidates like Bill Kimler to the state house, elect others so we can flip the General Assembly and we can pass these equitable marijuana laws. I think what I like about Joe Cunningham's plan is it not only legalizes marijuana, the tax revenue will go to fund our roads and our bridges and our infrastructure. And it will go to pay our teachers more. So in that, well, you're getting green for your green, which I think is amazing. <laughs> so again, what I think we can do, uh, Councilwoman, in order to legalize something I think we all can agree should never have been criminalized in the first place. Marijuana, the criminalization of it is a relic of the failed war on drugs, but that's a whole other story, is vote. And vote for Joe Cunningham in November because the stakes are too high for us not to. That's right. Well said. Any other questions for Jalen? Jalen, we thank you very much for coming all the way down here to Greenwood. We appreciate you sharing your wisdom with us. Thank y'all so much. I'll be around. Wait a minute. I got one final question. Okay. I know other people are thinking this. Do you have ambitions to run for office someday yourself? Oh, oh. Do you think he ought to run? <laughs> you think he ought to run? I am um, I'm from Greenville County, and um, regarding my political aspirations, uh, You'll find out in about six months. All right, I like that. I like that. Well done. Thank you, buddy, for six months.
Ah, uh, thank you, Jalen. And who said there weren't a lot of young people in the audience? I felt offended. I felt offended. <laughs> you know, going back to that uh, marijuana discussion uh, in South Carolina, this year came this close to passing what was called the Compassionate Care Act. It wasn't legalization of marijuana, but it was the legalization of controlled medical marijuana. And you read that 30-page document, and you had to jump through 50 hoops in order to get prescribed and get treatment as a nasal spray or some other means. You can't smoke, but you can get it through other means. Uh, it was one of the most controlled, restrictive pieces of legislation that did at least provide a pathway for children, for veterans, for cancer patients, for pain management, at least provided a pathway for them to get access to a non-pharmaceutical. Um, and it was my opponent, John McCravey, who led the charge that killed it at the last minute. If it wasn't for him, we would at least have that much today. Uh, two weeks ago, I sat with a family. They're regular members of our group. They attend our breakfast meetings. They have an 11-year-old daughter who has severe physical uh, challenges. Uh, she's about half the size of my 11-year-old stepdaughter. She's nonverbal. She's not mobile. Uh, she has severe kidney problems, and she's also prone to seizures, and those are the worst. The medication that she has been prescribed has to be applied as a suppository should she go into a seizure. The side effects of that med medication are so severe that they have to call 911 and have an ambulance on standby when they apply it because her heart could stop, her breathing could stop. That's how serious these anti-seizure meds are. She has been a champion of legal, legalized cannabis to treat this, and it has been shown for seizures to be a lot more effective, could be treated as a nasal spray with none of the side effects, and it even sharpens her mental acuity. She has been denied this treatment for her entire life. Um, this lady has written to John McCravey in person, saying, please speak with us, learn our story. I sat with them, but McCravey never responded. He is so focused on calling this recreational marijuana part one. That's what he called this. And he is just so terrified of it that he is just on a, an ideological bent where he's not listening to reason, not listening to people's stories, not even reading the laws. He said this was a liberal piece of legislation, even though it was written by a Republican, supported by many Republicans, and is one of the most restrictive things that I ever did see.